Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today we are actually going to be doing two things. The first is we are going to be flashing a custom BIOS to the X301 and the second is we are going to be installing this micro SD card chip where the wireless USB module would go. This BIOS flash will also do a variety of other things allowing us to use different Wi-Fi cards as well as this and it will also allow both cores of the CPU to run simultaneously up to 200 megahertz faster than stock. It will also allow us to use a throttle stop to activate those different speed increases and in general allow you just to do a few more fine tweaks. And this comes courtesy to us of the McDonald Tech series of websites and I've actually used their websites before on the channel way back in the very beginning when I was working on my X220. So when it comes down to being a, just an excellent repository of all the different mods that you can do to your ThinkPad, this source is not only held in very high regard, um, but is also very clean, easy to understand. So if you are looking on doing any modifications, and if you have access to a McDonnell Tech website, I, I recommend it. Like there's all the different things that you can do with this, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. It gives you tips on running it on modern hardware. I can go on and on, highly recommended. Link will, of course, be in the description below. So there are two flavors of the modified BIOS. One is simply just the whiteless removal and the SLIC 2.1 tables that simplify licensing rights for Windows 7 and up. And there's the one that adds the Intel Dynamic Accelerator support as well as the whitelist removal. So I'm choosing the more complex one, even though I'm not necessarily planning on tweaking with the CPU, um, but having that option is perfect in my mind. I will also be updating the Bluetooth card because it's simply a drop-in replacement located under the palm rest. So once you have downloaded the BIOS mod, there are two folders, the mod and original. You do want to make sure that you are running the original first, just to make sure that you have the most current version of the BIOS that will play nice with the modification file. It goes without saying that you do want your laptop plugged in whenever you're messing around with the BIOS because you certainly do not wish to lose power during a BIOS update. So we are gonna carry on with the modified version. So we're gonna open WinFlash 64-bit and we will want to back up the current BIOS and Flash because that is just simply wise. All right, so as you can see, it does delay. It almost looks like it's going to crash, but it has loaded new BIOS. It's uh, done the compatibility. It's reading the old BIOS and saving it as a backup. Once it's done that, it will go ahead and then flash the new BIOS. Okay, so we have successfully flashed the BIOS and the Bluetooth card has already been installed. So to remove the palm rest, you're taking out every screw on this south of that memory cover. They all must go. Now the screws that are facing upwards and our exterior are a different size than the screws that are inside the battery compartment. So that is worth noting with the exception of that one and that one. And there is one screw hiding just inside of where you would find the one for the hard disk drive. So we are going to spin that out. All right, with all of those screws removed from the bottom, this thing feels lighter still. We will open it back up very carefully. We will disconnect the two ribbon cables here and just gently lift those out of place. And even applying just a little bit of light pressure is gonna get this thing to lift up on the left and right sides. And we just push it forward. The whole palm rest comes off. We can see the trackpad is pretty, pretty integrated with uh, super awesome tape. And we can see the fingerprint module there, which is replaceable, which is handy. The Bluetooth in the X301 is 2.0 by default. However, it can be upgraded to Bluetooth 4.0 by simply swapping out the card. And I just so happen to have one of those cards right here. You know, there are several different FRUs that will work. 60Y3303 from Foxconn works. 
an FRU 60Y3305 from Light On will work as drop-in replacements. You don't even need to do anything with the BIOS. And this specific example is from Foxconn. It is the 3303. So removing the Bluetooth module is very, very trivial. There's one screw that we just spin out and remove. And then the Bluetooth module itself can be easily removed. There's just that connector on the bottom. So some pliers on either side pull directly up and out. We'll take our new one and just nicely wrap the sticker around. We'll put our face down. And there we have it. We have now upgraded it to Bluetooth 4.0. Easy as that. And we can see here that the ThinkPad Bluetooth 4.0 is happily being read. We are going to shut this down and install this card right here. So we will go ahead and remove the battery. And after that, we can take our trusty screwdriver and loosen the two screws that are holding the RAM cover on, which also includes the space that we are gonna be working in. And it is worth noting now that the BIOS has been flashed, we can also replace this Wi-Fi card as well if we wanted to. And the Wi-Fi cards that have been tested in here vary from the AC7060 plus Bluetooth, which is FRU04W3814. However, you will need to do the same modification to this that I did on the X220, where you are either covering up pin 51 with a piece of electrical tape or you end up cutting it entirely. So just be aware of that. To install this card is really quite simple. To install the SD or the micro SD, you just move this forward, it hinges open, you put your SD card in flat, there's a notch at the top, you close it and then you push it to the rear and it clicks into place. We will need to move the uh, Wi-Fi antenna wires out of the way to slot this in and it is a spring-loaded card. We will hold it down with one finger as we switch over to the smaller Phillips head that is required here for these very tiny screws. Once the first one's in place, it is very trivial to put in the second. So with that done, we'll switch back to our regular driver for disassembly. We'll tuck the wires in there and we will be able to put our cover back on. You will not be able to do this mod without flashing uh, off the whitelist if it's on there. When the PC boots, it will give you an error message indicating such, and that's as far as you will get. So with that installed, we'll go ahead and open up the display here, turn it on, and if everything has gone according to plan, after we get the standard splash screen, it should simply move on with its uh, detection of the management engine and it has allowed it to boot. So that is a success, at the very least on the BIOS side of things. It is also worth noting that you could get uh, P mini PCIe HD TV uh, tuner cards as well but I'm not as familiar with the processes involved with that. Okay, that's really cool, there it is. So it detects it as a USB drive and it was a 64 gig card, so some of that is being used up probably by either formatting or maybe some bloatware utilities that are on the SanDisk. But uh, all things considered, that is 100% uh, effortless. Now, from what I understand, you cannot use this as a boot drive for XP Vista or 7. I don't know if you could do it for 10. You are going to be limited by two things, obviously the speed of the card and speed of USB 2.0, because that is the connection that it is flowing over. However, that is so cool to see it just work out of the box. You could put a lot of extra storage in there. So if you take into account, there is a theoretical possibility that you could have up to three separate drives in here. You can obviously have the 1.8 inch bay, you can have the uh, micro SD card, which has now been installed, and there are incredibly rare 
to the point that I can't even find one for sale anymore. Seven millimeter uh, hard drive caddies that were designed for this machine. So you could get up to three, but anybody should be able to get up to two. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed this really neat look at a very uh, specific and niche product that still has uh, some really great applications, especially if you just need some storage for uh, videos and other data that speed of the hard disk is not a major issue. If you enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more, I would encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so the next time I post a ThinkPad mod, you are the first person to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.